Under half an hour, 100 bucks, and you've got yourself a full-fledged racing drone. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, we've got a super special video. What this is, this is the Ishin Tyro 99. If you want to see my review of this bad boy, you can go watch that video up there. But this one, what this is, this is aimed at new, you, new pilots in the hobby you've never built before. I'm going to show you how you can take one of these kits, which is 99 bucks. So under $100 and half an hour of your time, you're going to be building one of these bad boys. Because when I say half an hour, usually these things take hours, but... This is the simplest, easiest drone I have ever put together. So it has absolute minimal soldering joints. I mean, you've just got your motors and your battery leader. That is it. And then you are ready. And within half an hour, you're going to end up with one of these bad boys. So it comes in a kit form. I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step build process. Very easy, straightforward. How to put it together. We'll walk it through. And then you're going to end up with this. And let me tell you, like just putting some pictures on the screen, this is an absolute beast. That looks gorgeous as well. Now, I am running a giveaway on one of these. So big shout out to Banggood because uh, they're providing one of these to give away as well. So the official rules are down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Hit that bell notification. But let me know what do you like about the Tyro 99? Or how does this help our hobby? Because it's not every day that you get a 99 sort of build in one complete kit form. I did try to do it and recently we did the 2018 uh, UAV Futures $99 build. The little card should pop up there as well. That was sourcing individual components with a lot of different bits of soldering. But this one, I can't believe for like the 100 bucks it comes in this kit. So that's probably why everything, everyone's going crazy for it on the internet. A very, very hot drone right now. But when you get this, it doesn't come with instructions. So that's why I'm making this video. It's, it's for you pilots out there. You want an easy kit. You can take all the parts. It comes in one box, put it together and end up with something like this. Because that's what UAV Futures, it's all about. It's all about getting people flying, getting people experiencing FPV. There is no other hobby like it. It changed my life and I want to share that with you guys as well. Now on top of that, I did write an email to Banggood and said, look, if you're selling these kits for beginners, you know, you should be shipping them out with instructions. So what they did as a bit of a sorry to you guys and me hassling them, if you order this, the link should be down below, but also there should be a little gift icon or flash a picture on the screen. You should be able to get even more props. So another extra 20 props or something like that. So you should be flying for days. No need to worry about spares whatsoever. Anyway, enough rambling here. Let's stick this thing on the bench and get started with the Ishin Tyro and show you how easy it is for around 100 bucks in one kit and half an hour to build your first FPV racer. All right, let's do it. Right here, here it is on the bench, the Tyro $99 kit build. I'm going to be going through step by step showing you how to build this very cheap racer into an absolute race little beast and I've got to say if you're new to the hobby and you're thinking about getting in you cannot do it cheaper than this and with an easier kit because there is absolute minimal soldering so all you've got to do is solder up your motors and your battery lead the rest is plug and play like you don't have to solder in your camera you don't have to solder in your VTX it is ridiculous just how easy this thing is going to be and also how cheap it is there is no way really out there I'm absolutely shocked that you can build this for such little money especially Especially with so many spare props and you know all the little extras that you get as well now if you want to see my full review of this you can go watch a little card that should pop up here that should be a little playlist of it this is just the hard and fast build guide showing you how to put this bad boy together because at the time that I've got my kit there was no instructions out there and I want to help people do it right so they can take this racer go have some fun and fly around and experience this awesome hobby of FPV so let's kick it off we're going to put our frame together first and then it's a very very easy easy process of installing our components all right now what we're going to do is sort of open it up we're just going to make work on building our little brace plate and the arm section to sort of mount the rest of our components to but uh, you're going to open up your little screw section and there's going to be so many screws in there what I want you to get out is the sort of the longest groups of them so the three longest groups and I'm just going to call them long longer and longest and you can either do this one at a time or all at once whatever works easier for you so what you're going to do take your little brace X plate section that's going to go on the bottom take your longest screw that's going to go on the outside take your long one that's going to go on the inside and the longer goes in the middle like that now what we need to do we're going to put our arm on top of that making sure that the little bulb this third little bulb right here that goes on the outside so that simply slides over the top of these three screws and it's going to be a little bit tricky so you should have something that looks like that and then what we're going to do we're going to put our little plate over the top sort of sandwich it in between it's going to be a little bit tricky you sort of need an extra pair of hands you can hold it down with tape if you need to and then Bob's your uncle and if that little screw pops out don't worry too much about that that's what we need to do for our first step so you sort of need to repeat that three times I'm going to lightly screw this screw nut in but don't screw it all the way down just yet so we just want that 
as a bit of a placeholder. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Also, you can take one of these lock nuts and lightly screw it on the outside of the longest screw as well. So screw that down, not very tight or whatsoever. So we want to sort of replicate that with all three of our, with the remaining three of our arms. So let's cut to what that looks like now. Alrighty, so now that's done, the next step, what we need to do, we're going to attach our stack and it doesn't matter which side is the front, which one is the back. So all we're simply going to do is, you notice you've got four little standoffs underneath our little ESCs right there. They're just simply going to go onto those little Little middle screws that we've screwed all the way through everything else is tightened down these parts should pull straight into your frame but simply sit that on the top flip it over and then you should be able to screw it down so we're going to do that now and it should come nice and flat so you can see we're going to be closing the gap up in there hopefully that can focus so we'll screw each of these down just do them a little on each one so it doesn't put any pressure on them and then Bob's your uncle we've already attached our ESCs and our flight controller to our racing drone now whichever way this arrow was facing that's where the front of our drone is going to be so on this end now this is where the front of the drone is going to be and this end where the capacitor is and where we're going to attach our battery lead that's where the back of the drone is going to be now our next step is to attach our motors now this is very very easy stuff all you're going to need to do you notice they've got three we've actually got four screw holes underneath but you've only got three holes here you just want to put your motors on here run them across the arms to where they're sort of getting close to the ESCs now what I'm going to recommend to do is the ones with the black tops on them they should be on these corresponding arms and these silver ones they're going to be like that so uh, we're going to go ahead we're going to screw them down you should have some little screws in the bottom they should just go through make sure they're not touching the windings or anything like that so that's the underside here so we're going to screw all our motors in and then cut back and continue with the rest of the build and a little tip too look this isn't included in the build but uh if you'd like to pick some of this up this is a little bit of loctite and this is important because it stops your motors coming apart when you're flying around so it stops them sort of rattling out keeps the screws nice and tight because if your motors come off well you're going to have a bad day so i'm going to be putting a little bit of Loctite on my build as well. So with that done, now it's time to do a little bit of soldering and don't worry, the soldering on this thing is absolutely minimal. All we need to do is hook up our wires for our motors and also our battery connector. And I'm gonna say, if you've never done it before, do a little bit of practice, go watch this video, a little card should pop up here. That's a great guide on how to solder up drones. And this is about as easy as it gets. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna tin the board first. So that means putting a little bit of solder on here. That's gonna make our job a little bit easier when it's time to attach our motors. So uh, let's get these wires out of the way and then what we're going to do I'm going to zoom in a little bit more we're going to tin up each one of these little pads so I'm going to start with this side put it in whichever orientation is easy for you but each one of these little pads we're just going to hit with a little bit of solder some people say to poke the wire through and all those that sort of stuff for me look I'm telling you you don't need to do that I never do that in any of my drones you're going to be fine just the way it is so a little bit of solder on the end of your iron make sure it's nice and hot then we want to get in and out as quick as we can so there's one, two, and you're going to do that and you're going to continue to go around the whole outside of the drone. So I've done all the outside of my little motor tabs and then the only other part, we're just going to put a bit of extra solder on the back on where our battery terminal is going to connect. So we've got our ground over this side. You feel free to put a little bit more on this one as well, be a little bit more generous with your solder. And then our positive is going to go on this side. Right, so now you've soldered your tabs, what a lot of people often do, they cut the wires, trim them to the white right length and then solder them in here. I'm going to show you what a good little tip for this drone is going to make it a lot, lot easier. So I've done one here, but what I want you to actually do is unscrew these little screws. We're going to take this top flight controller off. Alrighty, so then you just simply slide that off. Then what I recommend people do is these wires, they actually come pre tin Hit them with a little bit of extra solder because that's going to make our join go just a little bit easier. So put a little bit of extra solder on each wire and then come around the inside and actually solder from the inside out so it's going to make for a much nicer looking build also be a lot cleaner and it means these wires are already cut to that length so that's why I wish they had instructions because I know a lot of people building this they're going to do it this old school way but these wires they're actually made to do it like this so let's go around the back like that there's one two 
Pen 3. So very, very easy. They're trimmed to the right size. So just simply put a little bit of solder and do that with the remaining motors. So do it with this one as well. That is just an example to show you how some people do it, but this is the recommended. Much nicer and also clean away. Okie dokie, so that's done. Now it's a very, very similar process. I'm just going to use a little bit of blue tack here to hold this down and we're just going to put a little bit of extra solder on the outside of our battery lead and we go through the exact same thing to hook it up to the back of our drone right there. Here we go. A little bit of extra solder. And yes, it does come with some solder on it, but it's not the best quality stuff. So adding your own is going to make it that little bit easier. And then we simply hook it up. So right here, this is our ground. And then we'll do the same side for our voltage. Alrighty, and then believe it or not, that's actually our soldering done. Okie dokie, so once that's done, you can tell just how smick, how much cleaner is when you come around from the inside. And before we put our flight controller back on, what I want you to do is just loosely put it on there because we're gonna solder up these little tabs here. Now this is for the receiver. I'm gonna be using this one. I'm gonna link it down below, but whatever receiver radio option you're using, this is where you'd put that in. So this is the option I'm using. I'm gonna be going with the Tyrannus and the FreeSize system. So we're simply gonna solder that up. Very same sort of process. So. Just let me clean my soldering iron here. I'm going to be using S Plus, and this may be different depending on people's radios. And then we'll solder this up. And it's all clearly labeled with your ground, S Bus, and uh, your voltage. Actually, I want it coming out the other way because it's going to be going around the top of the drone. Ground, my voltage, and my S Bus. Okie dokie. And then what we can do, we can screw this. We're going to use this later when we put our receiver in. We're going to put this back on like that. Make sure the arrow is facing towards the front. Screw this in and then we're going to be ready to continue going on with our build. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's screw this down, put these back on and then we continue putting our camera and really that's getting very close to our finished drone. So we've screwed that all down and now it's time to get some of these little extra connectors and this is the beauty about it. There is no more soldering. So this is going to be the wire that connects your your flight controller to your ESC that simply goes in the front like this very very easy don't force it it should go in nice and easy so you don't want to bend any pins then over this side this is what's going to be connecting to our VTX so that simply goes in right here there we go and then also our little camera option. So you notice on the camera cable, one plug is a little bit bigger than the other. The small one, that's going to go into our flight controller, like so. And then we can just simply hook up the other part. So on this end, this is where we're going to attach our camera. Where I seem to have misplaced it. Where Here it is, right in front of me. Uh, so that simply goes in like this. So that's our camera hooked up. And then we can hook up our VTX, which is the same sort of thing. There we go. That's how it goes. And believe it or not, if we put an antenna on here, this thing, it would be ready to rock and roll. So now what we need to do, let's build up the remaining parts of the frame. So uh, get your rest of your frame out. So now what I want you to do, grab your little brace as well as your little carbon side plate. And you're going to notice there's four holes. Line them up with this, but you only need to screw in these three. So one, two, and three. This one just there. Then they're going to be done with the sort of medium screws as well. So simply take one and it should just fit perfect in there. So we're going to screw that in just like that. Do that to the other two holes and then also repeat the process with this side here as well. So once you've done that, the next part, it's a little bit like a jigsaw. You're going to line up these holes on the bottom with these two holes on the bottom of your frame. Do one side at a time, making sure that you're not pinching anything and uh, there's no wires underneath. So I'm going to screw this side in right now. You say some more medium screws. So that's nice and tight in here, but also what you need to make sure you do is to put this camera in here before you screw in the other side because you're not going to be able to get it out otherwise. So, and there should be a little notch on the left inside. So hopefully that's in focus right there. That little gold part, what we're going to do, we're going to take our camera screw and we're going to screw into that as well. And also it says top at the top. So make sure you're getting it up the right way. Otherwise everything's going to look like it's upside down. So there's one side in and then what you want to do, repeat it on the other side making sure you don't crimp any wires or anything like that and then we'll screw that together also make sure your vtx actually is coming through this way so make sure that is like this it's just going to make for a cleaner build so let's screw that together and then uh, get on with the rest of it and we're almost finished so now our build's really taking shape all we need to do is a few minor touches so what i want you to do get your pigtail unscrew this little part that should slide through the back like this and then simply screw this little part on the top it doesn't have to be super tight. You can tighten it up in a, middle, in a little bit. And then also what we're going to do is get this on this side. 
and this on this side we're going to simply slide this in here so you're going to have to force it apart a little bit and then slide a screw in from each side so it's sort of like your standoff that also holds your antenna so you might need to loosen it underneath as well just to get a little bit of extra purchase but that should be nice and snug so let's go ahead and do that now now i'm just going to show you how i'm installing my receiver so i'm just going to put a little bit of double-sided tape here and clip this in this is the part this will be different depending on what radio system you're using all that sort of jazz but I'm going to connect this and I'm going to sandwich it sort of in here nice and snug just like that. So my receiver's hooked up. We're going to connect our little pigtail right here to the back of the BTX and because it doesn't actually fit inside it's going to need to strap to the top of this thing but what we need to do first just simply slide a little zip tie that comes in the kit through these two side holes or these side cutouts right here that's going to make it that's how we're actually going to secure it down to our uh, to our drone so simply put that in like this and then with the four short screws making sure you're not pinching any wires that's really important we're going to screw this down into place just like so and then use the zip tie because it doesn't actually fit inside to uh secure this bad boy down so i'm going to do that let's see if i can move this just a little bit there we go that's how i want it just like that give that a little snip then you should have this last little bit of the frame i'm going to click that over the front right here use two small screws again to screw that part down and then while we're at it let's go through tightening some of these things up so let's tighten this part at the back up as well our little connector where it went through that's looking good then we're going to attach our pagoda antenna and then what i'm going to recommend you've got some spare zip ties left over that come in the kit so i'm going to zip tie them to the side just like this have them coming out on a bit of an angle that's actually where i'm going to be running my receiver antenna so i'm going to do that put a bit of heat trick on and then it's time to put the props on so let's cut to what that looks like in three two one boop. so there it is all finished you can see i've put my props on these ones they're spinning clockwise and these two they're going to be spinning counterclockwise and for reference this is motors one two three and four i've zip tied and heat shrunk my little receiver antennas there flashing pictures on the screen congratulations you have just built yourself a 99 dollar drone the only other thing is i'm sure some people are saying stuart you should have put this heat shrink on at the start and for me I just think that's going to be more pain than it's worth. I am a much bigger fan of just putting some electrical tape around there because it's easy to take on and off. If you get anything that's damaged, this part, it's going to require you to cut it open and then you're just going to be all out of luck. So I really prefer the electrical take tape on the arms. I think that is a much, much better solution to hold these wires down. What I am going to do, I am going to link an FPV camera down below because I feel like out of anything you're going to upgrade, I think the VTX side of things and the camera side of things would be pretty nice, but you can't really complain for $99. So if this is all you've got, absolutely take it out rip it around go have some fun but if you do want to upgrade check the link out down below because i recommend a bit of a better camera to put in it'll give you sharper colors a nicer image and i think it'll just help improve your fpv experience and the other one when it comes to the vtx i am also going to put another link down below for something that might be a little bit smaller and i think you might be able to have some luck if you fit it just inside in the back here because then you can strap a gopro or something like that to the top of this drone a little bit more easily but that's it your 99 dollars tyro build and for something that comes out of the box it is so easy to build minimal solder joints and definitely should be a little ripper so hopefully you guys enjoyed that check links down below as well because there'll be some in there there'll be some links to the review i did of this frame so you can talk about the pros the cons the designs all that sort of stuff where you fly it around hit it with speed gun sally all that sort of jazz but as far as the 99 dollar build goes i really feel like Esheen has stepped up to the plate and delivered something my, my favorite part is just how easy this was to build so you got some kit in here but also absolute minimal soldering joints and it looks amazing too. I love this purple color. I think I got lucked out when it came to that one. Alrighty, so there it is. There's a Tyro $99 build guide. And overall, I'm absolutely blown away. If you followed along and built yourself one of these as well, you can, let me just say, you cannot really get better performance and better price. I do have my own $99 build, which you can check out as well. But this thing, the way it comes in one kit form and how it is so easy to put together, is absolutely mind boggling. And I can't wait to see how many people jump into a hobby and have an absolute blast with this thing. Now, what I am going to do, I'm going to link this down below and also this little bad boy right here. This is a little run cam camera. That is probably my number one recommendation. If you do want to drop just a little bit more cash, it'll be able to go in here. It's going to fit inside that frame, but that camera is just going to be the icing on the cake and make that image just that a little bit crisper. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Definitely subscribe for more FPV related content. I'm going to, if you followed along and you want to give back to this channel as well, I'm going to put my Patreon down below. I post out things like Velcro straps, all that sort of stuff. That helps me make these videos and sort of get people into the hobby that's what it's all about but other than that subscribe for more fpv fpv related content enter the giveaways and as always happy flying happy building first then happy flying
Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.